can I avoid disaster? Well, I go back to the beginning. You get the carburetor set up and a few other things just to see if I can uh, salvage this. Thanks for watching. Hey, welcome back to the hangar. Um, yeah, last uh, update was um, where I found the charging circuit not working and I was wondering what's going on with this engine. What do I do? Uh, didn't want to idle once it took the choke off and all of that. So anyways, I'll skip ahead. I spoke to uh, John with uh, Rotac Repair um, uh, out in Ontario. Um, I have two sources of, of very valuable information. One of them is John as well. And he, he's the guy that invented and sells the fogging compound. So I, I, I mentioned to him that it, it still didn't draw oil. <clears throat> So there's a few things I'm going to look for, and I'll film that. But uh, charging circuit, I got to do a few more tests to find out what's wrong. Uh, it is the AC that is not being produced, so there's no AC coming out of the engine. Uh, broken wire, possibly. These uh, stators don't normally go bad. All it is is wire wound around little. Post. It's like it's there's not a whole lot to go wrong except for a broken connection. So I got to put my test meter on there and look for continuity through the stator. If I see an open circuit, there's a broken wire, which means pull the engine, pull the stator, find out if it can be repaired because sometimes the broken wire is right where the heavy wire from the outside of the engine goes to the stator. That connection there. Maybe it got stressed when I was uh, rebuilding it. I don't know. It's possible. If not, if it is in the stator itself, inside the windings, what have you, uh, I'm just going to buy a new stator. So that would fix the charging problem. The engine running problem without the choke, John was saying that uh, there's a few things to do before you throw in the towel. Um, he said, everything that he's seen me do so far in my previous videos, like changing the bearings and decarboning and everything else, he says, yeah, you're, you're good. Your engine is good. And, and I checked the compression on that engine, and the compression is, is right up to spec. Everything is good. <clears throat> Just doesn't want to run. That's not an engine problem. That's a carburetor problem. Um, I kind of know that, but I thought I had the carburetor set up right. Now, I'm basing that on working on snowmobile engines 15 years ago. You know, two-stroke engines and other two-stroke engines, but he said, no, look at these few things here as well, and uh, gave me some pointers. He says, this is where you want to focus. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to focus on that, and before I pull the engine, I want to get the engine running right. So that when I pull the engine and work on that stator, find out why it's not charging, uh, and when I put it back on, I know I have a working engine. So, um, that's the next step. I'm going to pull those carbs again, and I'm going to go through the setup process right from square one as if they were brand new carbs never installed. A lot of things that I did, I assumed, which is a bad thing, I assumed that the engine was set up correctly from day one. That's a bad assumption. It may have been running rough like this the whole time. I don't know. I have no, ex no no history on this engine when it was flying, uh, or this airplane when it was flying, because last time it flew was probably now, nine years ago. So how was it running? Um, so the way the carbs were set up was how it was left. All I did when I pulled them was clean them and reassemble them with all the settings exactly the same. Um, I'm going to zero them out. I'm going to start as if these were brand new carbs and go step by step by step and set everything uh, according to plan. Then I'm going to start it up and, um, and we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. Wish me luck, I guess. Um, but that's the goal for today is to get that working and to do a few more things with an engine fogging because they're, they're would think there might be a blockage right in the bottle. Um, just see if you can blow air backwards through it. Duh, I should have done that. <laughs> but okay, if it makes bubbles really good, then we know that it's, that it's open. Then there could be something else going on here, and we're not really sure what. Um, anyways, uh, and and I made a mistake. 
Oh, geez, that's a rare thing. <laughs> the premix that I've been putting in there is a little heavier than I normally would. I could mix it 50 to 1, and I was mixing it about 30 to 1. And, uh, and I wasn't priming or running oil through the oil pump. That's a no-no, I found out. John said, no, 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 don't run that pump dry. Okay, so I'm going to put oil into that reservoir. I'm going to get the oil pumping system, make sure that it's working, and I'm going to fill the, uh, some more fuel in there. But he said make it a 100 to 1 mixture. It'll be fine. You won't wreck the engine. This is, and that's what they do when they do the breakups, and break-ins, and they've got breakups, <laughs> break-ins, and they've got an engine uh, oil pump system, and they just simply watch, make sure that it is injecting oil, and Bob's your uncle. So that's what I'm going to do. I got some more fuel. I'm going to mix it to a 101 mixture, put it into the tank, which will uh, thin out that oil mixture, which could possibly be one reason why it's not running right is the oil mixture is too heavy. Yeah, I, I kind of know that. And why I wasn't thinking of that, you know. Um, in the old days, we called those brain farts. I had a brain fart, so yeah. Hey, so that's what's going to be happening today. Um, thanks to everybody who watched the uh, videos and, uh, and uh, made comments, that kind of stuff. I do read all the comments. Um, and um, yeah, thanks a lot for that. I appreciate that. Which brings me to the obligatory every video I do. Remember, down there, down there, like and subscribe if you, if, if you like what you see. But hit the like button and leave a comment. So there we go. That part's done with. Um, onward. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is um, check that oil fogging system because that's quick and easy. Make sure there's no blockages, that kind of stuff and uh, prove that part out. I'm, our blockage, or there could be an air leak somewhere. It could be that the straws, that kind of stuff, aren't inserted properly and it's drawing air. Who knows? So anyways, that's it. On to, words, on to work. It's a big intro. I can see it's almost seven minutes long. Whew. <laughs> so, bitter patter, let's get at her. It's interesting. This is the the uh, hose for the oil engine fogging, and the oil by gravity went back down into the reservoir. I left the reservoir valve open. That's kind of telling me that it's not blocked. But hey, let's carry on and find out. Um, let's pull the air cleaner off. Tastes like heck, but let's see what happens. Yeah. Oil. Ugh. I don't see any restrictions at all. That went through there easy. I'm going to turn the valve off. 
and see whether it holds any kind of pressure. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's leaking at all. I'm going to check this tube. I would have to say this is free and free of any obstructions. It's right, so I'll do it again. See if you can see those bubbles. I'm not blowing very hard. Okay. What does that tell me? Tells me that A, the oil is not very thick, so I thought it was like molasses. Yeah. Tells me there's no restrictions in here. Interesting. Okay. Let's um let's carry on. I'm using the screwdriver to give the hose a gentle push as I'm uh, pulling on it as well, pulling on the hose. Because if you just pull on the hose, you sort of shrink the diameter of the hose and it, it binds and grabs a hold of the fitting even tighter. So you actually want to be able to push it off, which is what I'm doing here. And then when I get to the near the end, I should be able to pull it because it's just about ready. Pop off. There we go. Well, look at that. See, all the fuel drained out of here, but as soon as air got into this line and the vacuum disappeared, all that fuel went in to this carburetor. Why? Interesting. Like they used to say in that old TV show, Laugh In. For those of you who are old enough to remember, Artie Johnson used to sit there and say, Very interesting. Yeah. But this is very interesting. One other thing I need to check is the uh, where the needle is set. I got to verify that. It was I left it at the original setting. Going to verify that too. That'll affect it a lot. Okay, first carburetor is coming out again. this to the workbench.
Okay, what I didn't show on camera was I had to adjust this uh, float valve because it's supposed to be the measurement is 10.5 millimeters from the uh, top of this lever to the top of this float bowl here. Which is kind of tough to do because there's nothing to rest a m measuring tool against back here, so you really got to eyeball it. But it was off by over one and a half millimeters, meaning that um, it wouldn't it wouldn't fill with enough fuel. Like it, it, it was it, the float bowl would not be full enough. Um, is that what affected the um, uh, the uh, running? Maybe. But uh, in order to adjust it, what you need to do is, let's get really close here, this tab here, according to the manual, this tab here is merely bent up and down in order to adjust the height of this lever. From the top here to this profile here should be 10.5 millimeters and equal on both sides of course so that is that is a full open and of course as the float bowl fills up with fuel it closes and shuts off the fuel and keeps on opening and closing as fuel is used and um, there so this one was definitely off whether that is going to be the uh, the culprit, we shall find out. But I am confident that it is now correctly adjusted. So I'm just going to check it one more time, just to make sure. 10.5 millimeters, and that's good. One more quick check. And that is exactly all. Okay. I'm satisfied that is adjusted correctly. Now, back to the manual. This is the service and maintenance manual. And there's the blow up for the carb. That on, if you have this manual, it's uh, page 76 of 170. Illustration number 115. It shows you how to make that adjustment on the float bowl if you have the manual. So let's carry on. Okay, little point here. It says uh, during idling the cable play should be at least one millimeter. And that's the cable play on the throttles. I think mine were tight. So we shall see. I think I have that over adjusted. Okay. Okay. Before I put this card back in, I'm going to check the needle valve. See where it is set to. Now, that little valve, this in this needle jet. Okay, where am I set? Okay. Put a little O ring out. Well, counting from the top, I'm on the second from the top which means that it's lean. I'm going to move it down one notch to make that a slightly richer mixture because my thinking is if I had to apply some choke to keep it running it wasn't getting enough fuel. This will give it just a little bit more fuel. I'll find out. It might be running too rich. And that's the one thing I didn't ask John uh, at Rotax Repair, where I should set this valve. 
this is so easy to change, I'm going to uh, move it down one notch, making this slightly richer. So, let's see what happens. Put the O ring back in. And there we go. It's one notch up now. It was at the next step up. There are four set steps. It was on the second one from the top. Now it's on the third from the top, or second from the bottom, depending on how you count it. So, let's see what happens. Oh, that's better. And this one appears to be correct. Doesn't need adjusting. Interesting. All right. Now I'm shaking these uh, floats just to make sure there's no fuel in them and that they haven't leaked. So that could also cause a real big problem. So, get this back together. One hour later. And, yep. Part two. You're going to have to tune into part two to see if all that work I did on those carbs and everything else did any good. I got to cut it short. This is 20 minutes long already. I, otherwise, it would have been a one hour video. See you next week. Thanks for watching.